So we are going to derive the product to sum formulas for sines and cosines, which will let us split these expressions up into a sum of two single trig functions instead of a product. In order to do that, we're going to take a look at the angle sum identities for sine and cosine. Let's start out looking at the cosine of a plus b. We know if we expand this out that we'll get cosine a cosine b minus sine a sine b. Now what we're also going to look at is what happens when we take the cosine of a minus b. In this case, we're going to get cosine a cosine b like before, but then instead of a minus, we're going to get a plus sine a sine b. Now let's say we wanted to isolate cosine a cosine b right here. Well, if we add these two equations together, notice that the signs over here are going to cancel out. So that's what we're going to do and we'll get that the cosine of a minus b plus the cosine of a plus b is equal to, well, we add these two together, we're going to get 2 cosine a cosine b. And now if we want to isolate cosine a cosine b, well, we just take 1 half of what we have right there. So 1 half cosine a minus b plus cosine a plus b. Now let's say instead of finding cosine a cosine b, we wanted to find sine a sine b. Well, in that case, we would have to do something a little different. Instead of adding the two equations, we're going to subtract them, just like that. So now the cosine a cosine b is going to cancel right here, and we're going to end up with, on this side of the equation, 2 sine a sine b. Then on the left side, we get cosine a minus b like before, and then minus cosine a plus b. So we go over here, if we want to take sine a sine b by itself, we get 1 half cosine a minus b minus cosine a plus b. So the last one we want to do right here is sine a cosine b. And in order to do that, we'll need the angle sum formula for sine. So if we take a look at this sine of a plus b, well that's going to be sine a cosine b plus cosine a sine b. Then if we do sine of a minus b, just like we did with the cosine, we'll get sine a cosine b like before, and then minus cosine a sine b. So again, we add these two equations up. These cosine a sine b terms are going to cancel out. And over here, we're going to get 2 sine a cosine b. On the other side, we'll get sine a plus b plus sine a minus b, just like that. Now if we want to isolate sine a cosine b, we'll again take a half. And for the sake of making all these equations look the same, I'll write sine a minus b first, and then plus sine a plus b. So using the angle sum identities just like this, and adding the a plus b and a minus b versions so that each part of the equation cancels out, we can get these three identities. Now some people might be asking, what happened to cosine a sine b? Isn't that the fourth thing that we should have on our list right here? And the answer is, if you find an expression in this form, all you have to do is flip these two terms around because multiplication is commutative, and then you can just apply the same identity right here. There's no reason to add in a new identity if we already have the information we need right here. So these are the product to sum formulas for sine and cosine.